Welcome to the Guide to Wellness podcast, your source for practical insights and tools bridging the wisdom of traditional Chinese medicine with the advancements of modern functional medicine, empowering you to live a life of wellness. We are dedicated to promoting a healthier world by providing tools, knowledge, and simple things you can do every day. So if you're ready to adopt new health habits and do things differently, listen and learn here. So let's face it, we're mammals and influenced by the natural world around us. And we can't forget this. Even if we're driving in our cars and we're working all day on computers and we turn the thermostat up and down inside our homes, we are undeniably human. As the sun rises in the morning, sets in the evening, the moon waxes and wanes, there might be a storm in your backyard, you might be out in the rain or the snow, it might be blistering hot, but the deep cold of winter gradually turns into spring, spring turns into summer, summer into fall, and fall back into winter. We can use the seasons to amplify our health, well-being, energy, and focus. And this is one of my favorite topics ever as a licensed acupuncturist. In this episode, I have Don Schwem, our health coach, here to give you some practical tools and insights for living with the seasons. She also has some really exciting news to share with you, so stay tuned for that. And as always, I'm your host, Susanna Freeman, licensed acupuncturist, clinic director at Great Turning Healing Center, and guide to wellness, your home base for functional and traditional Chinese medicine. This particular conversation is a continuation of our year-long discussion of the seasons from the perspective of traditional Chinese medicine, how they influence us, these seasons, and how we can use the seasons to amplify our success in life, in health, and in well-being. And in particular, how do we use the seasonal energy to blend with our own individual energy and use it to build our focus? Dawn, I don't know about you, but I'm kind of feeling the tug of springtime. This morning, I stepped outside, and there was this distinct change in the air. It sounds a little weird and hard to describe, but it's not just that there's more light in the sky. There's, there's birds chirping that weren't chirping even a few weeks ago. The air is warmer. There's something subtle mm-hmm. and different. Do you know what I mean? I do. I feel like even that little subtle change comes into the smell of the atmosphere. Maybe something about the sun Uh becoming stronger changes how things warm up and start to smell more alive. Mm -hmm. There's definitely more smell in the air. Yeah. It sounds weird (laughs) that you can smell the air, but somehow you can. Mm -hmm. It is what we do all the time with every breath. Yeah. (laughs) Imagine that. So as a practitioner of traditional Chinese medicine, I've really been enjoying this talk of the recent Lunar New Year mm. that just happened in our in our collective world. Everyone's talking about it, much more than Chinese New Year, any other year that I can remember. Mm-hmm. So this is the Chinese astrological system, and it explains the cycles in the natural world and gives us suggestions for living in harmony with the seasons, and it's particularly relevant this year. So can you tell us a little bit more about this coming year? It kind of sounds like we should buckle our seatbelts, Don. I don't know about you. Definitely. Well, I've heard a lot about this year as well. I would agree that it seems to have a little greater potency than maybe past years. And in the context of it being the green wood dragon, and I'm sure you'll get to speak more about what wood element and all of that ends up looking like in Chinese medicine. Maybe you can give us a little idea about that. But my understanding is that it is very much about this potent growth and extreme inspired innovation uh, invention in that we are looking towards new technology, new versions of ourselves. We get to invent that as well. And we actually have all of this energy working towards our our success, our prosperity. Mm -hmm. And if we put the work in, if we take advantage of that growth, that innovation, we harness this energy, we are going to see product of all of that work. We're going to see success. So do you have, Mm -hmm. um, since this is so much tied to the wood element, do you have a little insight into that? Sure. You bet. And I want to remind you all that last spring, because remember this is a year-long conversation, Mm -hmm. last spring we spoke also about the wood element this time of year. So if you go back to a previous episode, I believe it was March of 2023, Mm -hmm. sound about right, Um, go back there 
And we were talking about the wood element and the spring season and very specifically tying that into our physical bodies and the organ system of the liver. We're not talking necessarily about liver disease here. We're talking about the liver's ability to regulate and process and handle all that new growth and new energy that's coming our way Mm -hmm. and how to make sure that your detoxification pathways in the body are working well so you don't get jammed up. Mm-hmm. and frustrated and irritable. And I know we were talking this morning a little bit about how you were feeling some of that springtime energy. Very much. Um, maybe you can chat with us a little bit about your experience because it's very human. Mm-hmm. And that's the beauty of tying in what's happening in the natural world into our physical bodies. So please, if you're interested in more information about the wood element as it relates to our our physical bodies, that is last year's spring podcast. It was a lot of fun. We help a lot of people in the springtime with detoxification because remember, you have to be able to process what you put into your body, whether it's food or a thought or input from exercise or a stressful situation. And you have to be able to let go of process and then let go of whatever is no longer useful. Mm -hmm. And that is not just the wood element, but it's largely the liver processing, getting rid of things that you don't need anymore. Yeah. So super important. And I don't want to digress too far, but that is the wood element and the liver system in Chinese medicine. We use these metaphors because Chinese medicine is very directly tied to the natural world and our place in the natural world. It still gets down to what are you eating? Are you pooping every day? Are you sleeping well? And how is the quality of your mood and your energy and your mental focus and your medical condition and your health? Mm -hmm. So it's very, very pragmatic. And it also has these little more esoteric uh, themes to it with the seasons. And yeah, um, so it's a little bit of both. I'm glad we're hearkening back to that episode because in a lot of ways, thinking back on it, it's like the pre the essential precursor to what we're going to be talking about today. Mm-hmm. If you don't have your body in order and your liver doing really well and uh-huh. being supported, then you're not going to be set up for what we're going yes. to be introducing today. Perfect. And it's almost like two sides of this transition, right? We have the the there's two components, the detoxing and the preparation and then the action, which we're going to talk about uh, the action today. Right. Yeah. And if you're all stuck and jammed up and frustrated, then the new bringing in the new is going to be more difficult. Mm -hmm. So if any of this rings a bell and you're like, but my liver is not working quite right, then you know you can call us and we'll help you. Mm -hmm. And just a reminder to everybody, we are humans. We are this constant balancing act. There's no such thing as perfect health. We aspire to balance and health, but balance almost means this back and forth, like whoop, a little bit too much over there, like worked a little too hard, now it's time to rest. Oh, I've been resting too long, let's let's step our f- foot on the gas a bit. Mm-hmm. There's always a back and forth. Absolutely. Um, so we're not looking for perfect, we're looking for balance and we're looking for moving in the direction of health and well-being and, and improving ourselves every day. Mm-hmm. All righty. So with that in mind, you were talking about detoxification and being ready for the new. So let's think back to last year a little bit. It was, in a lot of people's experience, a challenging year. And every year is going to have challenge and hard work. But last year, I got to say, seemed a little bit more just hard work requiring dedication and discipline and lots of mundane, just, okay, here I am again. I'm still doing those reps at the gym. I'm still working in this one project at work, and I'm not seeing a lot of forward momentum. Mm. And how to stay focused on your goals while that mundane uh, task is continuing over and over and over can be difficult to do. And we talked about this in our last two podcasts, so please tune in to those. And and really, I want you to think about 
how to work with the mundane. We're going to talk a little bit more about this in a few minutes, but how to work with the mundane as you still have your eye on the bigger picture. Right now, we're stepping out of that deep dark winter and we're stepping into spring. So let's, just to get this concept of the seasons and the big picture, I want to tell you a little story and I want you to imagine you're an acorn and you're on your way to becoming an oak tree. And the difference from a teeny little acorn into a big, massive oak is big. <laughs> Absolutely. <right>? <laughs> <laughs> and so when we last spoke of the seasons on this podcast, it was autumn. So imagine you're a little acorn and you've just dropped off your big mother tree and you've landed on the ground and a little squirrel picks you up in its mouth. And you're like, oh, oh, I'm about to get eaten. But in fact, you don't get eaten. You get to go on a journey. That squirrel stashes you in the hollow of a different tree. And there you sit, all tucked into in the little hollow of your tree, and you rest through the winter. And as you're resting, you're maturing internally as a seed and getting ready for what's to come next. And you continue to do this for a very, very long time, and that's the mundane. You're just sitting there, <laughs> And all of a sudden, a big winter storm with a lot of wind tumbles you out of the hollow and you swirl around in the air and you land on the ground and it's cold and icy and you get covered with snow and rain and you're laying there as your little acorn and you consider, I wonder what's coming next. I'm still in that waiting mode. I'm starting to get ready for the next thing, but it's not yet in motion. That's mm -hmm. the winter season. It's this deep rest and reflection and building your reserves, but you're not there yet. And now the sun starts to activate and get a little bit warmer. The rain and snow, are, they're turning into water and they're adding some water into your shell and you're starting to get ready to open up and crack open. And you know that you have ways to activate that growth and to sprout. No, no, Don, this sounds a little silly, but it actually there's something to it. Mm -hmm. And I was just chatting with a patient before we came over here, and we were chatting about her health goals and how, and this was her idea. She was like, I absolutely intend to be working with you a year from now, but I can't think that far ahead right now. I can think, in, I can think through the spring. I can think in about three-month segments. Can we just focus on that? And I'm like, mm. absolutely, we can focus on three months at a time, right? Yeah. Because that's much more doable. And before you know it, you add those three months and you add another season and you add another season and there you are a year later with your goals. Mm -hmm. So she beautifully, without even knowing it, told us about this podcast and what we're talking <laughs> about here. So here we are. We are heading into spring and it's this concept of quickening of spring, and this is an old idea from uh, many cultures from around the world. It's that time halfway between the winter solstice and the spring equinox. Mm. And it's what we were referring to this morning, what's happening here in our world right now, is the smell of the air is different. There's some heat in the sun. Even if there's a storm happening, you still know that spring is on its way. Even if it's 10 degrees and snowing sideways, you still know there's spring is on its way. And we use this rising energy to motivate us to refocus our energy back into our goals for the year. And if we pull in the Chinese New Year, the Lunar New Year, Green Wood Dragon, Green Wood Dragon, then what that is teaching us and reminding us is to use reciprocity and generosity. Mm. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about that? the importance of that reciprocity in this coming year as it relates to this new growth that we are experiencing, and in particular this year, the year of the dragon and the intensity of that growth, how do you balance it with reciprocity? And what does that mean to you, Don? I love that you use the word reciprocity because in order to have reciprocity, it means that there are gifts. There's so many ways to look at that. We can look at this time that we had during the winter as a gift moving forward into the spring. But we can also look at the use of this motivating rising energy to give a gift back, like pay it forward almost. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of times people think of reciprocity as retrospective, but hmm. it's an endless yeah. cycle, right. just like yeah. 
pay the, it forward. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Just like the cycles of the seasons, this reciprocity is an endless cycle. And that means that we can be paying it forward, receiving gifts from the work that we've already done. So many ways to do that and to receive. Mm-hmm. But so much about spring and this rising energy is about initiation. So we have to take what we've received and motivate to move forward with it mm-hmm. and transform it into something new. And initiation is about beginnings. It's about uh, starting something new, this transformative experience. And a lot of times this is through trial. And like last year was all of this work that we had to put in working through the mundane and doing our best to receive it as a gift. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) It does take a little work and reframing in order to receive that as a gift sometimes, but it's what leads to transformative experiences. Mm. And with this new energy, we can work on starting new habits, new hobbies. And I want to encourage people, especially with this green wood dragon energy, to be courageous and curious Mm. in your decisions around what you choose to invite into your life Mm -hmm. and what you choose to put that energy toward. Because it is very easy to fall back onto old habits. And those habits don't always serve us. Just like we need to support ourselves in letting go of what doesn't serve us, we have to be able to summon the courage and the curiosity to try something new. And to remember that we're always capable of change. Absolutely. That our old habits are simply patterns in the mind. And one thing modern science is teaching us loud and clear is neuroplasticity and how we can indeed choose to think differently about those habits Mm -hmm. and put new patterns into place. Absolutely. And it does take courage because Mm -hmm. there's always a risk in trying something new that it might not work. Mm -hmm. But if you know that what you've been doing isn't working either, Mm -hmm. there's nothing other than your own fears or insecurity stopping you from branching out and trying something new and blossoming into this beautiful oak tree, right? But Dawn, what if I fail? What if I, what if my old pattern says, well, I tried that once before and it didn't work? Mm-hmm. Well, so my understanding is that you have to put in the work mm-hmm. and that healing is not a passive process. Mm-hmm. So even if you fail the first time, sometimes it takes a little bit of extra effort to find where that threshold to success is. Um, An example that I spoke about recently with a friend was when I was in college and I had been studying but being sedentary because of that, really Mm -hmm. devoting time to scholarly work, I ended up signing up for a class of power cycling at the gym. And the first day that I was there, I was like, oh my gosh, I used to cycle all the time. I've got experience with this. But I walked out of that first class being like, oh, my goodness, I don't know if I can do this. Mm -hmm. And I really questioned my own ability. And I told myself, you know what, this is going to be really hard, but I'm going to stick it out for three weeks because that was the deadline where I had to switch classes if that was the case. And I was like, can I interrupt you for a second? So if you know from our December podcast that... You could say it's hard, but you don't want to stop there. You want to find ways to make it easier. Mm -hmm. And you set a goal for yourself that was doable. And in three weeks' time, you were well on your way to a new pattern. Absolutely. Exactly. By the time that three weeks hit, Mm -hmm. I was walking out of that class feeling exhilarated and energized and ready to bike home and then bike to work <laughs> and yes. do all of that. So really, this it while it is daunting and sometimes you maybe have failed in the past, it doesn't mean that you're going to fail this time. Mm-hmm. And that's also where trying to invite new ways to approach that pattern right. it comes in. So maybe you can speak to that a little bit more and how we can begin to reframe and shift our mental patterns and how we speak about a challenge that we're facing in order to help support us in actually moving through that and seeing progress. One of the things that comes to mind is very simple. is just, it's always better to have a choice. Hmm. We always have a choice. And so we can choose to say, okay, I'm just getting a little better every day. That muscle soreness that I have from that cycling class is just making me stronger. 
Mm-hmm. That's not a failure. I mean, you could say, this is actually maybe a really good analogy, that in order to build muscle, you do want to exercise that muscle to the point of failure that you cannot do another rep or something close to that. Please don't hurt yourselves, folks. Mm -hmm. But you want to get so tired that you can't do another Mm push-up. And that's what actually, you could call that a failure. And actually, in the sports medicine world, they call that failure, bring that muscle to failure. And yet that's exactly what makes you stronger. Mm -hmm. It's that breakdown in the muscles that allows your body to go, oop, I think we need to like pour it on a little thicker here and build some more muscle because she's clearly asking us to do something more and we need to be ready for the next step. Mm -hmm. So our bodies have this innate wisdom that allows us to meet the demands that we're putting in front of ourselves. Mm Mm-hmm. And that to remember that we have a choice in that can be super, super helpful. And the other thing is, so you've set this, what we like to call an impossible goal. <laughs> and what we mean by impossible is to think big and to allow your mind to expand and to imagine new possibilities. And that's what the spring season is all about, is this new growth, new possibilities. It's really exciting. There's lots of dopamine in there. Hmm. And... And then there's the, what you were alluding to earlier, is then there's the mundane, and it's just step by step, and it can feel monotonous. It can feel like drudgery. I use that word on purpose because it can feel, it can have that heaviness to it Mm -hmm. sometimes. And it's really important to just allow that. I call it allow the mundane, which just to me lightens it a little bit. I choose to use the word mundane and allow together because it it makes me go, wait a second, all I'm doing is allowing this is mundane. Is there anything truly wrong with that? I actually sort of enjoy things being normal and automatic and like I don't have to think about this. I'm just going to do this. I'm going to do another hour on the cycle. Mm-hmm. I'm going to hike another mile. I'm going to spend another hour on the computer doing that work that needs to be done and then I'm going to get up and celebrate absolutely right so allowing the mundane is followed by these small wins what are the little things that you are accomplishing along the way so that with this patient we were chatting with this morning is we're going to celebrate along the way and meanwhile she's going to get to her year goal Mm -hmm. and in a year's time she's going to be a much improved version of herself currently Absolutely. And I know as a health coach, this is what you talk about with your clients all day long. Yeah. And I love how you talked about failure as a way, you almost use it as a tool to motivate you to move forward Mm -hmm. rather than recognizing that failure and saying, oh my goodness, I've failed. Mm -hmm. means I won't be able to do this many push-ups again tomorrow. Right. Right. That's the opposite of what's going to be able to happen is that I think about the famous quote from Edison that he learned 200 ways right. not to make a light bulb, right? right? <laughs> and <laughs> that reframes it as this idea that it's something that's teaching you, that's adding to your experience rather than stopping you from growing. Beautiful. And when it comes to the mundane, there are a lot of ways that we can magic it up in a way. Uh Um, So I like to think about ritualizing the mundane. When we think about this thing that we have to do over and over again, we can put a more positive spin on it as something that becomes ritualistic. And that means that it's constantly moving forward towards whatever end we're looking for. And there are really simple ways to elevate that mundane experience to set it apart. And An example of this might be what you wear to the gym or Mm -hmm. tools that you might use to motivate yourself and set that experience apart. So the gym is always a great example. And this time of year, people are really feeling that energy to be like, yeah, I'm going to get that beach bod on or whatever. Mm -hmm. But when we go to the gym, we wear specific clothes. We bring specific tools like a special water bottle Mm -hmm. or um, we listen to playlists that might Uh motivate us. And those are all ways that when we are doing them consistently, that helps to build a ritual. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, when we do that work and celebrate and sink into it, then we can see those results. And And I might add, we can do this at work as well. Absolutely. Recently, I have this really cool app. 
Mm-hmm. And um, you can uh, ask us about it. It's called Intersize. It's really cool. And I'll put it on when I need to do an hour or so of just super focused creative work and writing. Or mm-hmm. maybe I'm uh, doing a lab review with a patient. And I'm trying to really understand how to move their health forward um, for them. And I'll put on this music, and it's not distracting. It just keeps me in a little bit creative and is super focused, but it's become a ritual. Mm-hmm. And I have, I get a cup of tea, and I sit down, and I make sure that there aren't any distractions. And then it's really enjoyable. What might have seemed like mundane drudgery in the past is now like, this is really cool. I get to spend this hour, and I get to change somebody's life, and I'm enjoying it along the way. Mm-hmm. I love that you bring up the tea because I have a bit of a tea ritual myself when I need to get into that flow state Mm -hmm. and that focus, especially for things like work or study. I will always start. And I started this years ago and it turned into a ritual that helps me even today of just making myself a pot of tea. I know that I can take that five minutes to make myself a pot of tea and that's going to set me up for focus and have that experience that would have been mundane be elevated a little Mm -hmm. bit and in that I get to enjoy this time while helping somebody or learning something new Mm -hmm. even if it means sitting for a while and giving attention to one thing rather than all of the other distractions around us it helps to focus and get us into that flow. And a little bit of a segue, but I want to make sure, you know, since in functional medicine, health coaching, and Chinese medicine, all the things that we do in our in our daily work, we're always bringing back the physical side and the health and the fitness into the equation. So if we are sitting for an hour or so in deep focus, what's the next thing we need to do when we get up? Get up and move, right? <laughs> In a way that balances out that sitting position. Or maybe you're mm-hmm. at a standing desk and you need to stretch a little, but the point is to remember your human body at that point and to turn off the mind, even if it's just for a minute, right? And stretch a little, mm-hmm. go run around the block. I don't do 20 push ups. I don't care what you do, but yeah. you get the idea. Yeah, absolutely. All right. And it's important to remember that. Like healing is not a passive process. Growth is not a passive process either. Mm. It does require that focus. So doing these little rituals to help us get into this focus is how we're being proactive in our own growth. Nice. And anyone can always learn something new and different and apply all of the things that we share in the podcasts that we have. It's never too late to start something new. Love it. Something new. In the spirit of growth, Don, you've added something new recently, and you're building on this last year. And we've been talking over the course of this last year on the podcast about the seasons and about how to put new patterns into play. And so, again, just a reminder to people to listen back, especially to the November, December, and January podcast, because we're building a foundation here over the last three months into today's talk and into where we're going now in this next year. And we want to bring all of you with us because out in your world, wherever this finds you, you are doing the same thing that we are, which is building on your past foundation of work and focus and growth. And you're turning that into new goals and new growth and new possibilities. So Don, I've been watching you do the same thing here. And you've added some to your coaching services that you do a new business that's working directly with all of the themes that we've been talking about today. And can you share a little bit about this? It's I know your your business is called Hungry Hearts Quest, Mm -hmm. and I've been hearing a lot about it. It's really cool. So I'd like to hear about it from you. Yeah, well, in a lot of ways, I'll be applying everything that we've talked about today. Mm -hmm. So it's important that I recognize that because if I'm not doing it, I wouldn't want to ask others to do the same. Heal thyself. Indeed. So I am so excited about this. I have this new venture, Hungry Heart Quest, and with this work that I'm doing, I am working to facilitate experiential learning, meaningful community connections, and holistic wellness, of course, while providing avenues for this profound awareness through immersive outdoor experiences because our connection to nature is Mm -hmm. an important part of health. And in this, I'm offering workshops in addition to the coaching that I do with Great Turning to develop hiking and backpacking skills as well as 
teach some of those coaching tools for personal wellness in everyday life because we can't just change for the three days we're going to go out there. This Mm. is part of those foundations. We need to have a strong foundation. Cool. And one of my favorite aspects of this is this idea of going on a quest because that means that initiation, that transformation. And these quests that I'm offering are seasonal, but they are group coaching packages with this opportunity to join in a backpacking experience at the end of them Mm. in order to help integrate all that we've worked on coaching, which is so much talking and smaller actions in everyday life, into the body, into this experience of outdoors. And in my experience, I have found that working with clients who get to expose themselves to nature means that they have better capability, more confidence, and just a better ability to integrate whatever we're working on in mm-hmm. health coaching. Nice. And beautiful. So I'm bringing that in. And these hobbies and habits that involve nature exposure just really impact a person's well-being. And you also have the confidence and the experience to help lead people out in the natural world because that's something that you are really good at and have, like, that's been a big part of your life. Absolutely. Yes, yeah. I've been backpacking. Mm-hmm. I did my first one when I was five. We did nice. five days when I, I was did five. Too. Yes. Woof. Love that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, yeah, I, I know that you have so much experience mm-hmm. of the outdoors and how it impacts our well-being. Yep. And We're I both know guides, that. Which yeah, is why absolutely. Which is why the guide to wellness has so mm-hmm. much so much meaning for us. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Cool. And I'm working really hard to bring this idea of connecting with the outdoors as a critical part of healing ourselves and our community. And I'm really excited because I am doing my first workshop. Mhm. And it is on March 9th at 6 p.m. at the Movement Collaborative in Livingston. Cool. It's focusing on breath and posture, working through a seated Qigong practice called Shamanic Cosmic Orbit Qigong. Mm -hmm. And this practice is designed to bring us into balance and harmony with the natural world and with humanity. Perfect for us right now. Exactly. And Jack Schwem, the acupuncturist at Great Mm -hmm. Turning, has volunteered to help co-facilitate Later this summer, I'm going to be offering the same practice, but out under the stars because of that connection to nature. Cool. So if you are interested in doing some Qigong with Jack and myself, you can check out my website for registration. That's right. Check the show notes, everybody. And stay tuned for some more remote Qigong coaching from Jack. And then also our upcoming March podcast is also going to be on breathing in the vagus nerve. Fabulous topic. So I think there's going to be some nice building of your workshop and our next podcast into this one to help everybody have the tools they need Mm -hmm. to move into the spring. And by the way, if it's August and you're listening to this, it's still super relevant, so don't worry. Um, But just anytime you have a goal and you're excited or maybe you're in pain and you know you need to move into a new position in your life, we're offering you skills and tools and strategies and ways to think about creating change in your life and stepping into new patterns that can help you be more successful and make it, frankly, a little bit easier along the way. It doesn't always have to be so difficult and hard. Mm -hmm. That's the message I'm trying to put out that you can remember as you do this Qigong is it doesn't always need to be hard. It can be easier. You can make it easier with your choice and with your movement and with your breath. So Qigong is one of the best ways to get yourself back into a flow state that I know. Mm, Yeah. So that's your event and Hungry Hearts Quest. Anything to add on that, Dawn? Anybody who's listening to this can always come back to us as guides Mm -hmm. in that we are here at the clinic with the tools to help you move forward when you know you need help. And it's important to ask for that Mm -hmm. and to give gift yourself that as a part of that reciprocity. Beautiful. Love it. Reciprocity is the theme of the year, folks. (laughs) Enough said. It's time to go out and move your body. Continue to do whatever you've been doing with your day and to add some breath, add some spring in your step. Mm. Remember to ask for help as you need it because we're all in this together and that reciprocity and gratitude is so important as we all work together to build better lives for each other. I know that all sounds a little shmermy, but I actually really mean it. So that's what we wanted to share with you all today. Enjoy this winter into spring and let us know if you have thoughts or 
would like some support along the way, we are here, Great Turning Healing Center. You can find us on the web and in the show notes. Guide to Wellness is the nutritional and herbal side and coaching side of what we do. Just check out the show notes for everything you need. It's all there. And if you've enjoyed this episode, we would love it if you would download it, like it, and subscribe to get the next episodes. Follow us on social media. Give us a call at the clinic see how we can help you move forward with your health goals with acupuncture, with functional medicine, nutrition, and health coaching. And thanks for tuning in, everybody. Till next time.